Tip-tot. Hello everybody and welcome back to TipTart. Today we're taking a look at quite a popular request of mine, how to create colour half tones inside of Illustrator. You've probably seen this effect used quite a lot recently. It was big in the 50s on those kind of illustrations uh, and pop art and stuff as well when Andy Warhol came along. Um, but it's made a sort of comeback in recent years. Uh, use a bit more subtly than it was back then, but still an important thing to understand. If you don't know what a color halftone is, it is this kind of um, faded gradient of dots used to create shading. Uh, before it was a physical limitation, and uh, now it's sort of a choice that is being used digitally. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. Um, so with these first two, I'm just gonna get rid of them and start again. First thing you're going to need is a square or whatever shape it is that you want to turn into a color halftone. More likely it's going to be an overlay of something you've already drawn. And the second thing you're going to need is your gradient tool. Um, if you don't have a gradient, if it's just a single block color like this, for example, um, it's really simple to set up. You just go over to your gradient tool, make sure you've got it um, selected. I'm going to pop mine out so it's always here. Select your shape and click the gradient. You're going to want a simple black to white gradient. It doesn't matter about the um, settings too much, just understand that the solid black area is going to be where your halftone is the thickest and the solid white area is going to be where your halftone has faded away. Now if you created a gradient like this for example that means that this whole area here would be solid um, shapes pretty much the largest shape that you allow um, all the way down to where it starts fading out to white. Um, so to get started I'm just going to use quite a soft one a soft gradient here and I'm going to make sure that it's on full black which is what it is um, and now we're ready, we're prepared with whatever we need to create our shape from. I'm just going to do two so that I can show you some slightly different options. Take your first shape, make sure you go up to Effect, Pixelate, and then Color Halftone. Now you're going to be presented with some uh, properties inside a properties box. The max radius is the maximum size or the largest size of the circle that you're going to generate um, in your black area, reducing all the way down to zero uh, at your completely white areas. Then you've got your four channels for your screen angles in degrees. Now these represent the four channels of CMYK, um, and they basically, the lower it is, the more of a spiral it creates. Um, I found that 200 or 300 and all of them creates a good um, effect, which will show you what it doesn't do. If I just set these to something lower, which they'll probably be closer to this when you first open it. So let's try 100, 98, 76 and 84, something like that, and hit OK. You can see that all of your shapes are sort of slightly out of alignment. If you wanted all of these to be on top of each other, which you do for color halftone, you've got to set them up a bit higher, OK? So if we go back again to the same one, pixelate and color halftone, but we set all of these to say 300, you create a halftone that is exactly on top of each other. Now, at the moment, this is still editable within your gradient. So if I change my gradient, it changes the color halftone, as I said before, okay? But you can't actually use this um, effectively in Illustrator because it isn't um, a live shape. It isn't an editable object. If you wanted it to be, it's quite simple to do that. All you need to do is expand the object's appearance, okay? So if you went up to um, object, and then expand appearance. That will create a little border, which is basically finalize the shapes around the edges, but still not quite enough to edit them. What you need to do again is go back to object, go to image trace, and then go to make and expand. And what that does is it turns this into um, a physical shape, an editable series of shapes. They are grouped together. You're probably gonna to wanna to ungroup them like so, and remove the white areas. So to remove this first one, you can just click it and delete it. But then there's all these little niggly bits inside here that you probably don't want either. Um, to illustrate the problem with it, if I just created a new rectangle, for example, on a layer underneath, like so, you'll notice that all the white areas there aren't sort of see-through to the area beyond. Um, if you select one of your shapes, doesn't matter which one, and then go up to select same fill color, you can select all of the parts of your um, gradient that you need. You can cut those with Control X. You can select everything else, delete them, and paste it back in place with Control Shift and V. Uh, and then you're left with just the elements that you want. Best to group those again with Control G and then choose a different color, you know, lighter gray or something like that. Okay, it's so really all there is to it. Obviously, you can do with this whatever you wanted to do, whatever you can do with a normal shape. That's all there is really um, to it. Uh, Bear in mind the size of the pixels you make does dictate that if there's some gaps here, when it 
traces it to a live shape. It can't quite understand it. You get this kind of odd square effect, but that's fine anyway. You probably wouldn't want this first half up here. In fact, what you could do is just get rid of that in the group, like so, and then use this um, sort of properly spaced out section there. Uh, that's really all there is to it. Uh, so thanks very much for watching, everybody. I hope you learned something. Um, I'm still relatively new to this, so I'm going to keep looking into it, see what different effects and things you can get. If I find out anything more interesting, I'll do another video on this as well, um, because it seems to be something that people are quite interested in. Um, but yeah, yeah, really, that's all there is to it. Quite a simple and quick process, and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with when using it. Um, to that end, if you wanted to post any artwork you do make over on our Discord channel, then we've got quite a cool little community over there that helps each other out. Uh, the link to it is in the description. It's a chat place where you can come along and chat with other designers, offer help. They can help you share your designs around, that sort of thing. So check that out at the link in the description below. And hopefully I'll see you all next time. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.